Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how I implemented authentication into my e-commerce site. It is remarkably easy these days to get it set up and working. We're using a full stack SvelteKit app, Drizzle for our database, and Lucia for our authentication library. Lucia provides a bunch of really useful helper methods and functions to uh, enhance the authentication experience and do a lot of the annoying tedium of it, but it doesn't fully replace everything and we still have to implement some things custom. And what's really nice about it is it's not a provider. We're not using like Clerk or Auth0 or something where our users are gonna go off and live in someone else's database. They live entirely in our database. So I'm gonna show you guys how all of that works. If you enjoy this, make sure you like and subscribe. And yeah, let's get into it. I am currently using Lucia V3. This is the most recent up-to-date version of it. Uh, I believe they're currently going through changing some stuff up. They have changed a lot of the way it worked. I made a video on this a while ago, and I think in that video I used Lucia V2. We're now on Lucia V3, and basically the biggest change there was they removed the keys from the data model and heavily simplified it. If we go to our schema.ts and we look at what we actually need for our, our users, it's really simple. All we need is our user table. So it's just our user with first name, last name, provider, provider ID. I'll talk about why I have these in here in a moment. Um, all this stuff is very simple. And then we also have our session table right here, which is the same thing as it used to be. And there's no more like key table. There are no more keys to validate the user. It's just we store the important information on the user. If I supported email password authentication, we'd put our hash password in here. I don't because I don't like email password authentication. I don't want your passwords. I'd much rather just use Google OAuth and GitHub OAuth, which is what we're using here. So uh, I guess I'll start here by talking about why I have this provider and this provider ID. Now, uh, the way OAuth works is you'll obviously sign in th via GitHub or something and you'll get a user ID from GitHub. So you'll get like uh, whatever your GitHub ID is and then we can use that to authenticate our user. So in our database, in our user table, we need to store what their ID is for their provider. So what we need to store is we need to store, okay, did they sign in with GitHub or Google? So this is an enum. We can select either Google or GitHub. And then we need to pass in the provider ID because this is how we identify the user in our database uh, or because this is how the user is identified from that provider. So we have our provider and our provider ID. And then I set the primary key of my users table to be a uh, composite key of the provider and the provider IDs, which that means that it has to be unique. And that's basically what our users are defined by. They're defined by their provider matched with their provider ID. I also generate a user ID right here because that's just easier to work with in the relations and stuff. Uh, but their real primary key is their provider matched with their provider ID. There are a lot of other ways you can do this. Another way you could kind of do it is you could do like format the user ID as like GitHub, uh, GitHub vertical bar, whatever the heck their ID is or Google bar, whatever their ID is. And then you would just, whenever you're parsing the user and logging them in, you would grab, you would like create this ID. So you take the provider and then match it with the ID. Personally, I thought it was easier and more uh, verbose to set it to be provider and provider ID so that we know exactly what we're looking at. And in the user creation methods, you'll see why. Uh, but yeah, that's how we're sort of setting up our users and sessions table. The setup for this is really not too difficult. They have adapters for almost anything you could use. Here we're using uh, Drizzle because that's my personal favorite ORM right now. So we need to go ahead and create an adapter for this. So we're going to create a new MySQL adapter. We pass in our database instance, which we're importing from our DB, or we're passing in our session table and we're passing in our user table. And then this way, Lucia can go ahead and run the methods it needs to for fetching our users out of our database, uh, saving them in, doing all that stuff. We then go ahead down here and, and initialize our OAuth providers. This is using the new Arctic library, which is kind of part of the, um, I don't really know what to call it because this is the first time I've seen this, but like the Lucia cinematic universe type shit, I don't know. Um, but there are like a ton of different packages that are kind of subsets of Lucia. I think Oslo is one of them. Uh, there's a bunch of different packages in here, which all kind of do some subset of authentication really well. Because sort of the theme on this is they give you nice tools to help you deal with the annoying crap like implementing OAuth without completely taking the whole thing away from you and hosting it in your own database like Clerk or Auth0 would. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new instance of GitHub. Uh, we need to pass in our GitHub client ID and our GitHub client secret. Uh, let me show you guys real quick how to do that. It's actually really easy to get these things. Uh, you just go into your GitHub settings. You go into your uh, developer settings. You go into your OAuth apps. And then you go ahead and grab the stuff in here. I believe this is under Rock Our Glass Local. So that's what sediment used to be called. 
You grab your client ID, you create your client secret, and that's it. That's all we need to do to initialize a new GitHub instance. Uh, Google is a much more of a pain in the ass. Um, it, you just have to do it through the Google Cloud Console, grab your client ID, grab your client secret, create the redirect URL, which we're doing by just grabbing the base URL and then redirecting them to auth callback Google. That's actually a method which we are implementing here. If you look over here in roots slash auth slash callback, we have a callback function for both GitHub and Google. We'll talk about that next. Um, but yeah, it's a very similar process, creating a new Google instance. And then finally, we're going ahead and uh, initializing our Lucia instance. So we need to create a new Lucia instance. We pass in our adapter, which is how we connect to our database. We go ahead and check whether or not our session cookie should be secure. If it's in production, it should be. If it's in local, we don't care because we don't have HTTPS in local. Then a really nice thing we can do in here is we can grab user attributes for the actual user. So if you remember on the users table, I had first name, last name, email, admin, and Stripe customer ID. All of these are things which I'm gonna want to have access to on the user object when I grab it. And Lucia makes this super easy. So we can just define these user attributes right here, return it from this function. And now our user will, and now whenever we access our user object, we'll have access to this stuff. And the way we go ahead and ensure that that works with TypeScript is down here when we're declaring our module Lucia, we uh, register our actual Lucia instance and we also register our database user attributes. We can do the same thing for the session if we wanted to add some more uh, metadata to that. Personally, I don't have anything in here, but you could put some more stuff in that. So the authentication flow here is actually really, really simple. So I'm gonna use sign in with GitHub as an example. If we go to this page, which is uh, all slash login, I believe, yes, it's all slash login. We've got a bunch of stuff in here. And then this button right here, it just links to all slash login slash GitHub. And this is where the real, uh, the real work sort of starts. So if we go to login GitHub and this server.ts, this is gonna expose a get request. So whenever we navigate the user to this, it'll fire the get request. And then we can go ahead and set up their GitHub OAuth state. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, and this is all boilerplate code pulled directly from Lucia's docs. They have docs on how to do this for all the different OAuth providers. But the gist of it is we have to go ahead, set it up. We have to set up the state for our OAuth. We have to get the URL uh, from GitHub. And a big thing we gotta do in here is we gotta, uh, add in scopes to say user email, because we want to get the user's email here. So we're going to say scopes, user email. Then we're going to go ahead and say event.cookies.set, the OAuth state. We'll use this to validate that it's a valid state when they get redirected back to the site in the callback. And then finally, we just redirect them to the URL that we set up. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit sign in with GitHub. Uh, I think I'm already logged in here, so yeah, it'll just redirect me right back. Quick update in the edit. I completely forgot to mention this in the actual video. Uh, the really important thing right here is this authorization callback URL. The way we're telling GitHub to send them back to auth slash callback slash GitHub is by putting that in right here. That's not anywhere in the code base. That's right here. And I forgot to mention that you'd really need to configure this. So that's why they, whenever we sign in there, they get redirected to this callback and then we can go ahead and fulfill it, which you're about to see. They got sent to auth slash callback slash GitHub to this page right here. And this is where we actually validate that they had a valid OAuth session. What we're really doing with this OAuth is we go to GitHub servers, we log in on their thing, and then they'll send back a code saying, hey, this is valid, you can log them in. We grab this code out of the search params, we grab the state out of the search params, do a bunch of validation, make sure all this stuff is here, make sure our stored state is in here. Then finally, we can go ahead and actually sign in our user. Now, we're using OAuth here. so. Whenever they sign in, it's kind of an upsert operation because we're gonna want to, if they don't already have a user account saved within our database, we need to save that. But if they do already have a user account, then we wanna just log them in. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna grab our tokens here. We're gonna fetch some information about the users using the GitHub API because we now have an access token. We're gonna go ahead, grab our GitHub user. I've put down some useful types here. There's a lot more. Uh, it's not fully typed, but I just grabbed these because these are the ones I care about. Uh, we also, these are the types on the email response that we can get. So we're going to go down here. We're going to get all of this information from GitHub land. We're going to go ahead then and check and see if we already have a user in our database. So we're going to find the first one that, that matches. Remember what I said earlier that we're using these compound primary keys or composite primary keys. This is why we're going to be looking for the user where their provider is GitHub and their provider ID is the GitHub user.id. So we grab this existing user. 
If they exist, then we just need to create their session, set their session cookie, and send them back. So we go ahead, do all that right in here. Lucia has the built-in methods for doing this. This is the kind of nice stuff it does for you. Instead of having to go through and manually create the cookie and then set it and do all this crap, we can just go ahead, create our session, create our session cookie, set our cookie right here, and then that's it. That's all we have to do. Now, in the other case, when the user doesn't already have an account, we need to go ahead and create their account. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab their email. We want to grab the email from their account. Then um, this is kind of a mess. I kind of just wrote this and it works and I haven't really had time to go through and fix it. But effectively, all we're really doing here is we're going to get back a list of all the emails attached to their GitHub account. We want to grab their primary email and then we want to go ahead in here and create the user. So the name parts is going to be they'll send back like my name is Benjamin Davis. So it'll send back that as a string. So I want to split that to get the two parts of the name. I want to grab their user ID, which we're going to generate here. Like I said, this is just to make it easier to set up our relations and stuff within the database. Then we want to go ahead and create the user. So we're going to insert our user into the database. Then the exact same thing as before, create our session, create our cookie and set our cookie and then at the end of that and then at the end of it we're done we just go ahead and we redirect the user back to the home page and that's where i am right here and that's all we need to do to get the user signed in and create the account if you look at the google implementation here it's basically the exact same thing but a little bit different um you can take a look at the code link down below again this is also in the lucia documentation um, every OAuth provider is going to do this slightly differently. There's going to be slightly different things you need to do up here at the top to get all of the user's information. But generally speaking, it's the same flow of you validate their code. And then once you've done that, you need to create the user or just sign in the user. Okay, so now that we're signed in and we've got everything working, it is super trivial to actually work with this in our app. When you're setting up Lucia, what you want to do is you want to add them to your locals. So we're going to extend our locals interface here. We're going to type user and session here, import them from Lucia, set the type. And then we're going to go within our hooks.server.ts. We're going to go ahead and say we're going to grab our session and user out of our Lucia.validate session, uh, ensure that our cookies are all valid and we've got everything done here. And then we're going to go ahead and say event.locals.user equals user and event.locals.session equals session. So that means anytime if I go in any of my like page.servers or whatever, if I add it in here, I add it in a parameter right here, we'll do locals, we'll do const user equals locals.user, I now have full access to the user object right here. So this is going to be user or null, it's going to have all those information, all the information I need, and that's super, super helpful. Um, if you can see a great example of this actually being used in, um, whoops, we'll do this. You can see a great example of this actually being used with our little ensure admin method. If we look at our auth.ts file here, down here I have this nice little helper method called ensure admin. All this is going to do is it's going to take in our locals object. It's going to check and make sure that the user and the session are there. And then it's going to check and make sure that the user is logged in and that they're an admin. So on all of my admin routes here, so we go to like um, server.ts on my products route here. If I want to delete a product, it will first ensure that the user is an admin. And if they're not an admin, it'll just redirect them out of this. So we can just use this right here to protect any of our routes as we need. And it is super, super helpful and super, super easy. Signing out is just as trivial. All we have to do is just go to sign, or I think I did it as log, log out. Yep. Logging out is super simple. I just created this new get request endpoint where we just grab their session. If they have a session, we want to go ahead, invalidate that session, which will delete it out of our database. We want to set the session cookie to be blank. We set that to be the actual cookie. Then we redirect to the, them to the login page. We can fire this by going over here to the profile page, pressing log out, and that's it. Our user is now logged out. Like I said, this entire code base is open source and it's linked down below. You are free to use anything you want in here, uh, just not the branding and assets. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Like I said, authentication is really not nearly as hard as it used to be, and I will talk to you soon.